hold on, let me kill myself. I think I may be doing 4-2 today, which I always have trouble with 4-2, 4-2, man. <laughs> Especially Black World Tendency 4-2 is not my uh, forte, I guess. So my apologies if I die a lot while I film this, this one, this stage. Um, I'm going to be using projectiles a lot because, yeah, it's either, I only have like three levels left. I only have, let's see, I only have, well, I have a couple levels left. I have the rest of Latria. We've done all of Valley of Defilement. Let's check. We've done all of Valley of Defilement. We've done all of Stonefang. We've done most of Boletaria. So we have two stages left in Tower of Latria, one stage left in Boletaria, and one stage, or two stages left in Trine of Storms. Um, and I can actually knock out all of Shrine of Storms in one sitting. Usually the final bosses of every single stage except for Boletaria are right after, like the, the Tower of Latria 3-3 three, three boss and the uh, Shrine of Storms 4-3 boss are literally just boss rooms, like that's the stages, so you don't actually have to fight enemies. I could probably just film uh, those final areas back to back in one recording. But I'm really bad. I'm really bad at 4-2, guys. I'm sorry. This is going to be painful to watch. Um, I'm also... Have you guys ever eaten so much that you just feel, like, really out of breath? And, yeah, I feel really bloated right now because I eat a ton of food. And so I may, I may be out of breath while I film this video. Um, and I may make weird groaning noises because, oh, why did I eat so much? Uh, I'm filming this video way later than... I normally film my videos. Normally I film them right when I wake up in the morning, so I'm a little bit more energetic now, which is great. I actually probably should continue filming them later in the day, but I really like spending my, uh, my, the rest of my days, uh, with, with friends and, and doing stuff, so. Yeah. And I'm trying to get through Dragon Age 2 because of... Hold on. I'm trying to get through Dragon Age 2 because... Uh, I want to make sure that my save file is all up to par for when Dragon Age 3 comes out. Although, um, I don't know if I'm getting, I don't know what, what console version I'm getting. If I get, like, the next gen one, then it may not matter. But we'll see. They said that they're gonna figure out some way to transfer save file stuff over. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, these enemies always remind me of Ico quite a bit. Uh, the invisible ghosty looking guys. On Grim Reaper. Let's go. Okay, um, I also ran through here a couple times to farm for souls because if you kill these guys, they give you quite a bit of of souls. So I've done a couple of things in here that uh, normally would be here. Normally Patches is standing right here and he kicks you in this hole. So let's just pretend like I fell. And normally if you have perfect world tendency, this, this thingy comes off, and that's, uh, the Makoto sword. Right? Yeah, that's the Makoto sword. Um, and Saint Urbane is usually standing right back here. And when you talk to him, he says, oh, thank you for saving me. Patches messed me up. He, like, threw me down here. But there's a black phantom blocking your path, and then there's usually a black phantom, uh, standing right here. And then, um, I also took a video of the primeval demon, but I'm making that a separate video on its own. Um, so I can show you guys what it looks like. I already killed it, and, like, I have, like, the footage and everything, so I'll make a bonus video. But, um, that would actually extend the video quite some length, because there's a black, or there's a red-eyed skeleton that is guarding the primeval demon. And killing him is kind of a mess with pure black world tendency. Um... Okay, so I have the Thief's Ring and the Cling Ring on, which are really important for this stage because if you don't have the Thief's Ring on, the boss is very difficult and uh, the Manta Rays will launch projectiles at you this whole time. So let's take care of these guys first. Uh, Franz taught me this trick. If you shoot this guy, <laughs> if you shoot this guy, if you can actually hit him, which I'm failing to do, um, he rolls right off the edge. He won't... He'll just do that. Yeah, there he goes. And the enemies are significantly harder in this because I do have pure black world tendency. Oh, I don't have pure black world tendency anymore. Ooh, what happened? Why, do, why don't I have pure black world tendency? That's very strange. Okay, well, um, yeah, so I, I thought I had black world tendency. Um, oh, maybe killing the primeval demon messed my tendency up, perhaps? 
That could be why. So that means the enemies aren't as hard as they normally are. Sorry about that mix up. So this should actually be a fairly easy run um, compared to if I were to do it on pure black world tendency. Um, normally there's a lot of red uh, black phantom skeletons like these guys, these fellows, and I just like to run past them. <laughs> Oops, they can they can get you with the the very tip of their sword if you're not careful, um, but they won't come past that doorway. Or they shouldn't, at least. But th they can um, extend their sword, which is fairly long. So, yeah. Um, th this guy's kind of annoying, but if you just kind of, like, walk up next to him, he can't hit you. Just because of the level of his projectile. He gives you a pretty good amount of souls. But there's another Grim Reaper that's hiding, which causes these laser guys to spawn. Um, and he's pretty... Easy to get. You just have to hit him once and he falls right off the edge. But be careful because he hits pretty hard. Whoops. And also be careful, don't keep attacking him consecutively because you will fall off that ledge. I've fallen off of it before and I fell off during my live stream when I did it. Also, there's an enemy. You probably can't hear it laughing because I'm talking and it's auto ducking the volume. There's an invisible enemy um, and there's an item I believe that normally is on that corpse and as soon as you pick it up the enemy will backstab you. A lot of times it's a one-hit kill. I'm not going to fight it though because if I mess up... Oh, there it is. Actually, I will fight it then because <laughs> they, they decided to appear for me. Um, but yeah, normally if they, if they successfully backstab you, it hurts quite a bit. And there's another one that's over here. Um, I'm not going to pick up these items because... Yeah, I don't want to get backstabbed by them. By that enemy. And I believe that there's normally a, uh, a red skeleton, um, like if you have pure black world tendency, there are red skeletons along this pathway, but if you have regular world tendency, they shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so <laughs> this is where I normally die. <laughs> Franz is probably laughing somewhere. I, he, this ambush is very cruel. Okay, so let's uh, peg these guys. Then there's a, uh, it's a Grim Reaper, who's right here. Oh! I'm just gonna run. <laughs> Screw that guy. Normally you can kill him pretty fast, but uh, I'm not gonna risk it because it's quite a walk. But yeah, that ambush sucks because uh, the ghosty guy that I sniped uh, is one of those laser guys. So as soon as you walk there um, and try to fight him, the Grim Reaper will, will try to backstab you. Well, not backstab you, but you know what I mean. He'll try to hit you from behind. Um, this area has a lot of... Uh, has a lot of explodey bomb. Like, these floaty things are just like... Just messes waiting to happen. Um, and then I'm going to pick up the Hiltless... I can not get killed by these guys. There's also an explosive that likes to come through this tunnel. So be very careful. I'm probably going to get killed here. Because I'm being really stupid and not healing myself. Whoopsies. You get a lot of sucker stone. Yep, there's the Ronin's ring in the Hiltless. Okay, so I'm not going to mess around with the explodey guys. Um, there's a lot of items. Oops, <laughs> I almost blew myself up. Uh, there's a lot of items in this area, but I'm not going to try to get all of them because I'm going to also try to kill Storm King in this run as well. So that way I can knock out two birds with one stone because I want to move on to my next LP. Because <laughs> um, Blair and, and Kyan have agreed, and Franz sound pretty excited too, have agreed to join me with my Metal Gear 1, so... Yeah, I'm excited. I also want to do my Shadow of the Colossus one, because I actually haven't played that game since I was in high school, and I love that game. I talked about it a little bit, but... Gosh, 
I'm so out of breath. Uh oh. Eh. He, uh, the boss himself is actually blind. So if you have the thief's ring on, um, he actually can't figure out where you are. But if you don't have the thief's ring on, he's very, very, very aggressive. And he has, uh, Wrath of God, um, so he has like a explodey AoE attack, and his sword reach is pretty big. He's a very interesting looking boss too, I really like him. Okay, so we have the thief's ring on. Whoopsies. So yeah, he's just gonna kind of like wander around aimlessly trying to look for you. Um, so you want to hit him a couple times, then you want to run away because he will do his Wrath of God AoE attack. Play it safe. Be careful, because he will just swing aimlessly, and it's there's sometimes where I've gotten caught in that because I've been a dummy. And his sword is actually pretty interesting because you can fuse it from his soul, and his boss sword actually gives a. Uh, gives a lux like a drop rate increase so you if you use it while you grind in your offhand it'll increase your your drop rate if you're farming for stones or healing items or whatever normally it's really easy to kill him much faster actually I could probably just uh, buff my weapon right now and that would actually help me kill him fast because I'm kind of chipping away. But I'll show you guys an example of what it's like to a buff here, meat cleaver. I'm not going to get too greedy. <laughs> there we go. That wasn't too bad. He's a fairly easy boss if you have the thief's ring on. If you don't, he's kind of aggressive. He's really interesting. When you fight him without it, I probably should have done it without it, but... Um, let's just go ahead and keep... Actually, let's spend our souls real quick, and then we'll, we'll keep going. Whew. Where the lim Okay. Let's repair stuff. And then we'll do Storm King, which is one of the easier but more gimmicky bosses of the game. Um, 
I'll show you guys how I take care of it. A lot of people do it differently though. And there's no real good method. Everyone can do whatever they want. Also, even though he's a fairly gimmicky boss, I think that design-wise he's one of my favorite. I really like him in like Moonlight Butterfly. Like um very like f like mythical or like crazy looking things. I don't know. I can't think of the word. Just bosses that make you feel like you're playing a really neat game. Or like really... Really original game. Because finding humanoid enemies in RPGs can get kind of... Become kind of like a slog. Um, but fighting giant flying manta rays is pretty rad. Just aesthetically and conceptually it's neat. get it whatever not important right now what is important is getting this sword this is the storm ruler the storm ruler is unique in that um, when you two when you do a power attack with it it launches a projectile and to kill the storm king um, and like these little baby manta rays it's actually a very good idea to use this <laughs> Um, especially, I mean, considering not a whole lot of people have access to projectiles and stuff that actually do a whole heck of a lot of damage. And this sword does a lot of damage projectile-wise um, within this boss stage. But as soon as you take it out of this boss stage, the projectile is no longer there. Um, The Storm King gets really mad that you're killing its babies after a while. And he'll come down and shoot stuff at you. But I always like to try to get rid of as many of the little babies as I possibly can before I actually fight the Storm King. Although the Storm King launches like a lot of uh, projectiles at you when he comes down. Which can be kind of a nuisance while you're trying to kill these little guys. Finish them off. So try to stay in cover, um, so that way you don't get hit. A lot of people like to sort of hang out by this building, but I prefer sort of down closer towards the rocks. If I can get this guy, <laughs> my depth perception, because I'm sitting on the floor right now, so my TV's higher than me, so there's kind of this weird glare. Oops. There he is. Okay, so you want to hide behind. I like this rock a lot. Um, except for when I get hit. But you want to try to hit him. Although, just like the mana rays, it's kind of hard to gauge how far away from uh, you he is. It's kind of annoying. Um, there's a couple places that I like to hide behind when he launches his uh, spears. I think there's one more little guy, yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to actually get him though. He's out there, so I'm not gonna worry about him. I am going to stay by this rock. Oh, there they come. There's a lot of audio cues in this boss fight, which is kind of difficult for me considering like I'm playing without my TV audio. Um, so that way you can tell like how many times he's uh he's thrown things at you or Oopsies. I guess I guess there's a second manta ray that's kind of floating around too. But he's a very gimmicky boss, he's very easy. Um
It's kind of easy to get one hit KO'd. You don't really know where to stand and if you don't get rid of his babies fast enough. Having a uh, King Duran's ring is actually a very good idea for this fight too because it regens your endurance much faster. And so you can get more hits on him each time he comes around but given my endurance currently it's kind of hard. But he makes a loop around a couple times. And that should be it. There he goes. Well, the little baby mantarius fell out of the sky. <sighs> but yeah, I really like that boss fight just from like con conceptual. Yeah, I hope they have. I, as much as like gimmicky boss fights don't really challenge you, I kind of like the variety of both boss fights that kind of keep you on your toes and gimmicky boss fights because gimmicky boss fights are just fun. I wouldn't mind like one or two. I don't really like uh, like puzzle boss fights like um. Bed of Chaos or uh, Dragon God. I think I like Dragon God more than Bed of Chaos though, but I really like uh, ones with special weapons or one with like unique environments. Um, they're very nice because there's a lot of detail put into them and I don't know. People will obviously disagree with me though. <laughs> they much prefer more difficult bosses, but um, I'm kind of excited for some of the bosses that they've shown. Although, like I said before, I'm going to try to not pay attention to any more news that comes out about them because I want to go in blind when I play. I also keep losing track of the Maiden in black. Where are you, Maiden? You guys probably see her, but I don't. <laughs> oh well, I forgot in my last uh, LP to talk to some of the new NPCs that we got. Oh, I think that's her over there. I think I walked right past her. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Thou seek then soul of the mind, key to life's ether. Okay, so let's go talk to some of our new NPCs. Hello again. You say I'm sorry. For I cannot, if you wish, however, but my, why not try the magic of great- So yeah, she, like, tries to turn you away because her, the type of magic that she uses is considered, like, more raw or, like, more sort of, like, dark. Like, she actually, like, actively makes packs with demons and, and uses them, uses soul arts very similar to the way that demons do. And it kind of reminds me of pyromancy, like, they're kind of looked down on. And then, like, Sage Freak is seen more of, like, a scholar. Um, but it's funny because Sage Freak actually, uh, is the one who kind of falls prey to the demons, whereas Yuria, even though she's, uh, really into the dark arts, she's very, like, self-aware and conscious about the decisions she's making, so she actually stays sane, which I really like about her character. I wish to learn witchcraft. It would honor me to assist one such as you. Are you sure? So I can learn, um, a couple of of things. There's Curse Weapon, Relief, uh, Firestorm at Ignite, and Firestorm's pretty pretty fun. Um, curse Weapon is really good. Yeah, there's also Ignite, but... It then I'm going to show you guys what Sage Freight can teach me. Oh wait, did I not get Sage Freight on this character? <gasps> Ooh, I'll have to go back and do that, because Sage Freight has some pretty good stuff too. Um... I guess I saved him on my my other character that I did 3-1 with. Oh, is that you? Do you have... So here's second chance. Um, so let's get this from the hero's demon soul. Oh wait. Come on. Do you have... So I'm gonna use my slot to teach myself second chance. 
Um, and then I'm going to equip a talisman in my offhand. If I have one. I don't think I have one. Let's go grab one. And I'll show you guys how a second chance works. Hello, I'm keeping... Since this video is only at 25 minutes, I have quite a bit of time. Since normally my videos have been like 40 minutes. Um, so let's go into Tower of Latria. We'll go to area one, because we, we need to go get Freak. And I'll go ahead and get stabbed by a Mind Flayer so you guys can see what second, ch second chance is like. Ooh, sorry. Oops. Oh, it doesn't look like I have enough int intelligence to actually cast it. Um, let's see how much intelligence it costs. Uh, oh wait, I don't think I could check. But yeah, I'll put more stuff into intelligence, but I guess I'll end the video here. I'll go- actually, let me go run and grab Sage Freak first. Even though I already grabbed him in my other character. Um, so you guys can sort of see where he is a second time, I guess. Um... Oh no, Skype! <laughs> I'm recording, hold on. <laughs> I muted you too, so that way- that way YouTube can't hear you. Uh oh. I'm fucking up now. Um, I think it's this way. Oh no, this is a dead end. Yeah, I'll pump some uh, stats into intelligence so that way my mana thingy is bigger when I... <sighs> so I can use second chance when I fight like King Alon and stuff. Because second chance is really good. I definitely suggest picking it up. Okay, so yeah, I didn't save Sage Freak on this character because I totally forgot. <laughs> so sorry about that. So now he's gonna head back. wonder if I have any of the Nexus stones. I don't think I do. Um, there are some stones that you could buy from patches, I believe, that allow you to- Oh yeah! That allow you to warp back to the Nexus, so that's good for us. And then I can run back and show you some of Sage Freak's dialogue, um, and some of the souls that he will exchange for... for spells. Yay! So that was fast. That wasn't too bad. Sage Freak hangs out right over here. Hello. You assisted me in Latria. But at my age, I do not believe... But at my age, I do... That's weird. But at my Maybe it's because my intelligence set is too low that he's, like, refusing to help me. Let's see. What do you want, bro? Yeah. Um, they see me as a brute because my intelligence stat is very low. <laughs> so I'll pump- I'll pump some- some souls into that. I'll probably use some of the boss souls that I don't need. Uh, do I have two gray souls? Or have I- did I not kill the gray? Did I not kill- uh... Whatever. Whatever, I'll do it later. So yeah, <laughs> that's the end of this video. So thank you guys for commenting and- and liking all my videos and being awesome. 
and yeah, I'll probably try to try to do more streams and stuff. I'm gonna be doing something on Saturday. I don't know. I'm trying to get through this game as fast as I can so I can actually do the Metal Gear LP because uh, Blair really wants to start it on Saturday, so I'll try to punch out or squeeze out as much videos as many videos as I can tomorrow. Um, so I may update actually twice tomorrow. Um, because all I really have left is, uh, all I really have left is Tower of Latria and Boletaria, so that's exciting. We're pretty much done, guys. It's the final stretch, so I'll see you guys next time.